uh, bringing it to my attention about a year ago, well, less than a year ago, for the uh, showroom exhibition, which unfortunately I couldn't get together in time for a lecture. But uh, thankfully, he's uh, hot-footed back from Paris, where he just had an opening at the Yves Lombard with, uh, in the company of people such as Lawrence Wiener, Christian Boltanski, Marcel Bruders, and other luminaries to be here this evening. Um, those of you who went to see the Whitechapel Speed Show will have uh, seen this small but very beautiful video installation there, which, like a lot of his work, it's, it sets a quite a, a simple structure in motion or, or, or a procedure, uh, a process, which um, in, in the exhibition is quite, usually it's quite a, a subtle and, and, and beautiful uh, perceptual games that are set up with his work. Anyway, I'd like to uh, thank, for Pierre, thank Pierre for coming on this evening and welcome up. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I prepared, oh God, it's very loud. I prepared tonight a um, selection of slides and a um, few things on video, so I'm going to try to shift from slides to video. If it works, it's quite funny. If it doesn't, it's a mess. Um, I would like to introduce myself briefly before to start to present you the work um, for some question about um, origins. Um, having lived in Brussels for six years now, sometimes in some exhibition, I'm uh, mentioned as a being a, Brit a Belgium artist, but um, my passport is a French passport, so I, I, I guess I'm a French person, even if I don't. Um, particularly feel as a French person. Um, in 94, after a show in Rotterdam, I was invited uh, by the Listen Gallery in London to participate to an exhibition um, named Beyond Belief. Um, and since this period, I kept contact with the gallery and I started to meet um, quite a lot of British artist and British personality and I started to even have some friends here uh, and last September I, I had the great opportunity to be invited by Delphina Studio to stay here and so this is was uh, this was from September to May um, and I intend to stay a bit more if I can um, the series of work, I made a selection of exactly eight different work. Um, but when I was selecting the slides uh, this afternoon, preparing the lecture, I thought that I would be happy to play a kind of little game. Um, so actually, I added some more slides. Um, and I decided that some of the work I will comment, and some others will stay as a purely um, a visual thing, so you will you will go sometimes through um, slides with no any comment. So I will mention when I don't make any comments on those words. But I thought it was nice to keep um, most of the work because sometimes it's true that a work um, uh, push another one, uh, but. The, the gap or the bridge between works are not so often uh, very um, um, logical. I mean, they, are, they, they follow a kind of logic, but it's not so direct most of the time. So I wanted to keep this idea of, um, I would say, disorganization uh, of the work. So I have to understand now, I have to start this. Good. Can we have a bit of... Thank you very much. <laughs> Most of the work um, from between 94, what I'm going to present tonight is a selection uh, of work realized between 94 and uh, I would say yesterday. Um, so most of the work done between 94 and 98 uh, started with experiments and uh, kind of little exercise. 
intending to um, develop um, a working method. Um, I think this, this, this method I was looking for um, was turning around the question of what to do. Or to be more precise, um, I wanted to show that the question of what to do and what to say is not so um, um, direct and uh, the way you act every day um, resolve part of the question of what to do and what to say. Um, a, very a very simple example of the way we, we, um, um, we act without thinking um, with a clear conscience that we are acting is through um, the process of perception. So I was quite interested into the process of perception in the way it's um, presenting. Perception is a, is a series of choices and choices involve um, a, a doing and a, say, a saying. So in 94, I I made a, I par participated to a group show called uh, What from the um, Beckett book What. It uh, was a huge uh, group show with 30 people, so I'm, please, I'm sorry that I can't remember all the names, but um, uh, I took time to note the names of the British artist who was part of this exhibition. So part of this exhibition was Tacita Dean, Peter Fillingham, Sarah Lucas, Jake and Dennis Chapman, Douglas Gordon, and Christine Ball, and I, th I hope I don't forget anybody. Um, this is a, a view of um, two of the artists, Douglas Gordon and Christine Ball, um, helping me at work, participating to the work I'm going to show you now. Um, the work is entitled What? Um, as the question, referring to the book, and uh, referring, I think, also to the fact that at the time they were asking me to give them a title, I wasn't sure about what I was supposed to do. Um, so this work um, I'm going to show you on video is a video work um, based on the question of choices. Um, the origin of the work is a, is a little I think I was working on a text at this time, or one or two years before, and I was um, trying to look for a synonym in the computer, and probably because I was a bit lazy, I didn't want to write anymore, I started to play rather than to finish my text. And I, I, I was involved in this funny game, like choosing synonyms and from a synonym, another one, and then another one, so on. Uh, it's, it's a process which is nearly um, endless. Um, I thought it was an interesting process because, of course, going from a synonym to another one, the chain the chains starts to become uh, dialectic. And I had this strange feeling that by only choosing words, I was starting to write a text. So if we could have an ex uh, expert of the work on video. Uh, the idea was to invite couples of people to choose synonyms on the computer. So they ha just had to, and the, the sound quite loud if it's possible. A bit more. <laughs> Thank you. Another, it's that's th there is three versions of this work. This one is in fr the next one is in French. Um, it's better to understand how people can um, be heard when they speak.
three seeds. Right, the water. Three seeds. Say no, sister. So the next sh the next uh, view is uh, a view, uh, installation view from a show in Rotterdam. It just shows you how the the work appears on the wall. Uh, the important formally the important thing was to have no frame around the, the image. Uh, so these th these are two words altogether I want to play with the random of the two. After that we, we will stop the video and I will show you slides if you can stop now. Thank you. So this was the uh, location of the exhibition in Rotterdam. It's a, it's a building uh, from Remkulas. And um, the idea was to use this uh, huge um, surface of uh, frosted glass um, to project the film from inside. So what you can see actually here is my work. It was very funny because, I mean, it, you could see it from far away. Um, for some strange reason, uh, it was possible to see the work from outside, uh, even with the sun, but not from inside because of the light. Um, so what you had access to from the inside was the projector with the voices from the people choosing the words. And you had only access to the visual part uh, Yeah, it's focused. Um, only from outside, but then you lost at this time the origins, the origin of the w of the choices. I have to say that it was absolutely invisible work, so I think nobody saw it. But that kind of work in in books, it becomes maybe something after a while. Um, that's the show I was speaking about in 94, Beyond Belief in the, at the Listen Gallery. Um, and I, I had the problem to resolve, uh, formally I had to resolve the problem that I couldn't play anymore with the frosted glass, so I just thought about reversing the image. And it can, can, we, can we focus a, a, t a tiny bit the, the image, please? A bit more. Um, the idea was to reverse the, the, the image to have no frame anymore and to be in front of uh, like a text on the wall. But of course, as you saw, it's, it was moving, so it's a, was a kind of, it looks as a kind of Robert Barry um, slide piece, but in video. That's some different shots. I thought it was, was mainly mainly a uh, nice piece with people around because I thought I thought it was about conversations and this idea of, of the words that you can hear from conversations around so it it's mainly a piece which functioned very well with with a lot of people around I had difficulties to find a place but I thought I mean, next to the library was a nice also location. I close up. So I'm just going through a series of, of different installations. It's, it's, it's funny to see how works can look very, sometimes very similar or sometimes very different from a show to another one. So in this case, you could hear the voice from the speaker.
that's the uh, Vidovic uh, exhibition you saw on video. I think in the context of the group show, I was, I was quite happy um, that the work could be literally uh, the result of a succession of choices that I, I wasn't doing myself. Um, after the show, the curator of this, of this exhibition proposed me to try to um, adapt uh, the work uh, for the catalog, so I was thinking about a way to um, do not only freeze an image of the video, but just um, try to extend the work on a two-dimensional. Um, um, so that's exactly that's the the double page of the catalog. It's the it's all the ways possible from one word to a series of synonyms. So the the first word is here, and then you have first series of synonym and then you have this third series of synonym which was already this double page was already a nightmare to do but then I for another show I decided to push the um, experiment a bit further and to have a third series uh, that's what's happening then it's a it's a huge poster three meters long uh, one meter high. So it's nearly invisible now, but the first word is here, and that's the synonymic uh, progression. A detail, which is difficult to read anyway. So I think the video, pu the, vi the, the video was was like a journey into a uh, language, and it was it was um, pu putting into practice the subjective relation we each have with um, with words and the relation, the very personal relation we have with um, the signification of words. In this case, it's a very objective representation. It's another way to uh, to. Uh, Put to put together all the page of the of, of a synonym dictionary. That's an installation view in London. Listen, Gary, also. Okay, that's a that's a non a no comment slide uh, done during the same period. So I just go. was I think that was my first video it's 94 also uh, with with some with I think some um, try out a year before the next work um, which is very very close to the synonym work is a, a work called uh, program um, the process of that was very simple. I wanted to invite people to choose a radio station in front of the camera. The only thing they had to do was to, um, they could take the time they wanted to choose the radio and then they, they had to leave the, the frame, um, listen to what, they, what the, the choice was and then come back only to, um, to um, switch off the radio. If we can um, send the video, please. So there is two versions of this video. This one is the first one with the, the radio was still on the image and the second one you're going to look now is Belt. Pour 5 francs seulement, dès 17 heures et tout au long du weekend, pour 5 francs la minute, vous m'avez just not to fall apart. Do you maybe related? Can we have it a bit louder? Okay, mais son train angefangen. Dans un monde où tout est permis grâce à leur imagination. 
pour ce voyage au bout du rêve, une seule destination. La Ligue d'improvisation. Trophée CGR 97 de la Ligue d'impro jusqu'à... C'est l'état forêt national. For me, it, it, it's nearly not a video piece because I thought I was playing on the idea that you had something to look at. But I always um, conceived it that as a sound piece. Um, the game was to push people, I think, to look at something for a while, and then the attention will be um, will be um, pushed on this on this wide screen, um, um, giving you the opportunity to listen really carefully um, at the, the sound. So the, the installation was actually in a very, very dark space. Okay, that's... Um, it's yeah, it's possible to understand. This, is, this was uh, installed at the Fondation Cartier in Paris. Uh, the installation is a very dark sp in a very dark space, which, which was quite unusual for me because I hate uh, dark spaces. Uh, but it was it was important for this piece because um, I wanted to have this very bright light um, as the only source of light in the in the room, and people could sit and just um, look at this bright light with a very strange uh, attention because they are I think we are still, by looking the, the, the white surface, we are still um, looking at an image when it's not no more than a light, <coughs> um, listening to music or to sp uh, people speaking on radio. This is a no comment slide. When I, 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 it's important to say, but uh, the fact that I'm not speaking about certain work are not because they are less important, it's just because they were not fitting in the little journey I wanted to, to have. <coughs> That's the same work in another other occasion. And we go to um, work called Pro um, Blue Monk in Progress. Um, this work um, was presented for the first time in France in a in CCC Center for the Art. Um, the process was to 
actually it was very simple, was to play for one hour trying to remember a song. Um, and I was playing on this very, very special piano, which is a Yamaha disc clavier. Um, it's, a, it's a very modern um, adaptation of a pi what we call in French piano lights, those piano playing with a roll of paper with a series of holes inside. And when you play on it, you create some holes. And when the, the roll is turning around, um, then the piano is uh, pl playing alone uh, with the, the keyboards moving. Um, so basically, the idea was to play, trying to remember something. And I was I very interested by um, this event that you every everyone could be um, could witness. Um, I think we should s we should send a video and you will understand exactly how it functions. So that's the video I did when I was trying to play. Of course, I'm not a piano player. So the next sh the next view is uh, it's terrible to see <laughs> the, the, the title could be uh, how much I've changed in five years but that's the that's an installation the video please um, one of uh, part of the one part important part of the work was to produce the musical score which at this time was next to the piano and the installation later on was just to put the score on the piano um, the musical score was the accurate retranscription of what I did for one hour uh, that's that's the first version of the of the score musical score, and then it became a bit different with the page bigger and the the music smaller in the page. Um, so sometimes the pages are very very simple, and sometimes it's very complicated. I actually I did an experiment after that, which is not part of the work. And I came with the, the musical score, and I asked um, a piano teacher to play the music without saying where what was the origin of the of the piece. And she did it very well, but she she thought it was a kind of contemporary music. Uh, <laughs> A deconstruction based on she recognized that it was a, a jazz tune. Uh, I think she was a bit upset about the, the because I didn't tell her what it was before. Uh, this is another no comment slide. This is another no comment slide. I can just say that was in Glasgow in a in tramway. 
um, and we arrive to um, a work called Postscript the Passenger, um, which in so many points was uh, was very um, uh, was really connected to the Blumok in progress. The the um, process of this work was to um, invite a, a typist to listen to um, a music through headphones, so she had no access to the images. Um, the theme I was I I, I chose was um, Michelangelo Antonioni film called in English The Passenger and in French Profession Reporter. Um, it's a film with Jack Nicholson and Maria Schneider. Um, so what what she was doing for one hour, nearly two hours, it was to just trying to retranscribe everything she could understand by hearing. So it's a mix of description of sounds and and retranscriptions of dialogues. Um, as she couldn't stop um, the the tape, um, she had also to make several decisions about what she had to um, write down and what she had to forget because of the speed. Um, I think we could we could uh, play the tape, please. So that's that's the the way it looks in a in a show. Um, it was very important that it it had to be silent, and you had access to the sound only through a pair of um, a set of headphones. So it's uh, it was. Uh, Okay, so five lines of text it means that the first line is like five, ten minutes before. Can can we put it a bit louder? become part of, uh, makes the quality of the, of the moment. I mean, the main idea, I think, was to, um, to present a, a reception uh, process as productive. J'étais en train de me demander quelque chose. C'est important Non. Vous savez ce que c'est Je suis entré par hasard. L'homme qui l'a construit a été écrasé par un homme. Qui était-ce Gardé. Venez. They speak about Gaudi in Barcelona, but she understood Gabi. Il a construit ça pour un fabricant de velours. Dans cette pièce, vous avez des concerts. Wagner. Vous croyez qu'il était fou Qu'en pensez-vous Comment se fait-il que vous soyez entré ici par hasard Pour me sauver. Hein De quoi Quelqu'un était peut-être en train de me suivre. Une personne qui aurait pu me reconnaître. Pourquoi Je n'en sais rien. 
Moi, je risque pas de vous connaître. Qui êtes-vous Jusqu'ici, j'étais quelqu'un d'autre. Um, thank you. You can stop the video. Um, so that those uh, slides are um, several different I installation. I I was showing this piece quite often. Um, there is two versions of it in Fran one in French and one in English. As you saw, the the French um, soundtrack is going with the English text. This is not, of course, a direct translation. It was a post-production effect. It means that I shifted um, this, the English soundtrack to the French typing and uh, and 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 the French uh, typing with the uh, sorry opposite side. So this is the French version. This is also the French version. It was in uh, Museum of Modern Art in Paris. So this guy was listening at the English soundtrack, which is um, for for the people who m can understand both language. It's a strange um, it's a strange effect because you start to mix um, and to don't know anymore if you understand by listening or if you understand by reading things. Actually, it was I think it was uh, the, this idea came from um, 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 looking at silence film and uh, subtitles films exactly, and thinking that um, the voice I was hearing when I was um, following subtitled film was. Um, a strange mix between my voice and uh, the voice of the of the actors. Uh, that's a sh um, others. I precise. It's a good example to uh, make this precision about video. I always said. I always said since I'm start. I. I do video that I hate video, um, and I still do, and I still say it. I, oh, I think people have difficulties to understand how you can dislike um, uh, a medium and still use it. I I use video because sometimes I have to resolve some specific problems, but I don't like specifically video. And what I hate is um, the notion of the, the the effect of darkness. Um, so most of those videos was trying to um, avoid this um, effect of darkness and uh, I was trying to not attract the attention of people by having a very beautiful image in a dark space. Um, so those videos are always with a lot of light in the room. It's very important that the people can st be still being, be, be conscious about the fact they are looking at something and look at eventually other people looking at something. And I like also this idea that you can always be disturbed by something else by looking at a work. Most, m one of the reasons I was using video was for duration question. I think I wanted to have such long work um, uh, th th that means that I was producing, like this one is two hours, it's impossible to stay for two hours. So it's obvious that you just have to catch something when you are there. And you can leave before the end, you can get in before it's after it started and leave before it's ending. That's the last installation of this work in Berlin, in Künstlerhaus Betania. It was the first, l first time I was trying to uh, put the, the work in the center of a place. Um, I was always quite afraid about putting the work in, in the center of a wall, but actually I think it's working. I'm a bit um, against very monumental work, so I mean, that was difficult for me to, I mean, it was interesting to try, and because the work is so formally minimal that it's okay. 
that's a no comment work. That's a 95, I think, work. Uh, that's a no comment work. It's a video. That's a no comment work. It's a record. It's 90, it's 90, 90, Five ninety-seven. But a lot of my works are I have double dates because it takes a long time to just realize the work. And I like to redo works often. So of often I have two or three versions of the same work. This is a still a no comment slide. Very important work for me. Same work, another way. Still no comment work. It's a film. another one this is I just want to say this is a, um, a collaboration with another British artist uh, called Jonathan Monk um, he's, he's actually doing a show in London at the Listen Gallery it's a very good artist this is another work with the without any comment <coughs> This is interesting, I mean, because w now we are going to reach another work which was done after all this, all those works, and which is linked to the, uh, the one we saw before, um, the party. Uh, that was, that's actually the, um, the installation view of um, the showroom exhibition, and this work is actually in Paris. Um, we can maybe send the tape. It's a very long excerpt, expert, sorry. It's difficult to say for me. Um, the work was based exactly on the same process as the first one, but I wanted to show that the, the problem wasn't to erase the images of, of the film. It's a 1968 film from Black Edwards with Peter Sellers. So the, the film had sound, of course, but I just shifted the, the sound with the description of the film.
Thank you. I have to I have to go a bit faster because it's already late. So and I would like to reach the last work. This was the the work the work presented at the um, Whitechapel exhibition, um, which was the most obvious example of an act of reception, um, which become the subject of the work. Uh, basically, was uh, simply a friend of mine listening of, of, uh, to a piece of music. Um, Stravinsky piece and the work was installed on a monitor and you had access to what he was listening to through a set of headphones. I think what was really strange for me in this kind of situation was the fact that uh, what the work was, the work wasn't the, 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 fil the person filmed and it wasn't the music, it was just this strange notion of time, this, this gap between us and this person listening at, uh, to the music and the fact that um, this gap was always reduced to zero um, at the precise time you were taking the headphones to listen to the music. We can send the tapes, it, there is a short um, extract of that. Uh, it was qu I think it's quite funny also because my friend is so serious. <laughs> This is a this is a series of work um, which a very very um, um, explicit title. Uh, the title of this is "Things I Remember I've Done but Don't Remember Why I Did Them," uh, which <laughs> refer to uh, things that I in fact did, like drawings, um, series of photograph. Um, Sometimes it's just collected object. Um, newspaper pages that I, I kept for some reason and with the time I can't, by coming back to it, I'm, I'm not able anymore to understand what was the the reason of this interest. So this is, I mean this, of course it's it's even more, it's, it's very strange when it's, it's about a drawing, um, but that's clearly something I did and I don't remember at all what was the point. And I'm not, I'm basically drawing to um, keep a trace of some things or ideas. A f photograph. I, I do recognize it's in Brussels, but I don't know why I was looking at. Uh, this, is, this is quite an obvious situation, it's the kind of drawings you do while you are talking with people, so um, this is, a, uh, I suppose, an explanation of something or a series of explanations. It looks very technical, but I don't know what is it about. Uh, this is a um, dictionary page. Uh, um, this is kind of paper you get from the street. I think it's a Catholic uh, advert. Um, it's very so. It <laughs> and this is a table set from the train. Um, now we reach a work um, entitled 
um, in French, en suivant la main droite de Following the right hand of Jean Turney in Laura, in the Otto Preminger film. Um, the, the process and the idea of that was to just, uh, with a marker pen, to uh, follow um, during the whole duration of the film, to follow the right hand of the, the main um, female um, uh, character. Um, I think we, I, I brought the tape with me, but I think time is a bit short now to show you an ex uh, a piece of the film. But um, actually, I, w I wanted to have some slides from uh, two uh, architects called uh, Coop Imel Blow. Because when I, when I produce this drawing, um, it just reminds me a lot of things, but, but specifically a series of drawings from those architects. Um, they, they, they are well known to, I think, start their project by drawing, um, um, by not looking at what they are doing. They just close their eyes and, and they, they draw things, and after that they start to... And we reached the last project I wanted to show you. This is a series of 16 film uh, shots, which very short clips of 25 seconds each. The, uh, the process, uh, the idea of this work was to create a kind of um, um, useless um, uh, fiction, just because the fiction I wanted to create would be uh, quite invisible. So what I did is I uh, worked with four actors and they played uh, some movement. They, they were acting and doing some movement um, quite banal, as uh, so banal that it could, could be even less um, visible than what, what could happen around them. My wish was actually that uh, some unorganized action could become more interesting. Um, maybe we should send the tape. And so what the tape is, is a series of the, the five um, shots. The work, and that's very important, is, is in loop. And the loop system is very important in this case because the idea that because of the loop you start to know by heart every movement and because you start to anticipate every movement then every movement is becoming mechanical. Then the gap between the actors and the non-actors become really thin. And that was sh that was done in Brussels in a very beautiful passage for uh, passage Saint Hubert. Something I didn't know when I did the film is that I I discovered that the, the Lumière, les frères, frères Lumière apparently did one of their first um, film in this in the same passage. <coughs> so that's yeah. That's another one. So I suppose you will start to n then notice who are the people working for me. But one is quite difficult to even recognize. It 
it was quite surprising that people didn't care at all about the camera. I think it's because of this, this place is uh, so often filmed and photographed that people doesn't care anymore, don't care anymore. we can see one more and then we will stop because there is five different shots and it's going to be too long. I think the next one is a different one. There is one very good with a lady with a, a suitcase. I hope it's this one. So the idea um, that the work was presented for the first time in Brussels, but as there is two versions of the same same work, so one only one film was only one clip was presented. Um, there is another version which which is based on the idea to present the five um, clips all together, and so with five uh, screen to create a kind of um, game between the two repetition, the repetition from the com com uh, from the actors and the repetition from the loop. Maybe we can have a look of the, the la I would like to see this woman, but if it's not the next one, then we will really stop. Thank you. So that's for five 
freeze stills from the film, from each clip. Same moment. I was quite surprised that the comedians, the, the actors were so precise. And because I, I spoke about the Lumiere, I just made some shot. I think, in fact, there is even uh, the way the, the image is, is, um, is constructed, it's a kind of similarity. Voila, that's the end of the lecture. Thank you. We we'll probably have uh, a few moments for some questions, if there are some from the audience. I'm sure, there must be. If I can understand the questions. <laughs> I think you stunned them all. No questions? No questions? I think uh, and Brian, you always have a question. <laughs> a very simple one first. Yeah. No, I think I was trying to, to start the lecture by saying that it had to do with the question of what to do. I think that it was, in fact, this was very important to me um, to show that expression or production of um, whatever art or whatever um, can start by just an act of reception that um, perceiving something is already such um, an act of selection that it, in, it involves already an already said and an already done. It means that often we, s we start to think about what to do when we have to produce something to, to take out something from us. But we rarely consider as an act of reception as a production. And I think that w what basically I want to show that receiving something is already a production can be perceived as a very lazy attitude. But um, I think it's important. I think sometimes we just um, look a bit too far when choices, and very important also, it's, it's also a question of politics, I think. Political choices are done even before to start to believe that we did or, or said something. I don't know if it's giving any information about what you wanted to say. But. One more question over here. Um, I noticed the acts of transcription and translation are very prominent in your works. How do you go about documenting them as another act of transcription and translation and then presenting them in a lecture? You mean uh, if I consider uh, the presentation of the documentation of the work as a continuation of the work or what? Uh -huh. it's an, for me, it's, it, that's a, a very interesting point because, in fact, <coughs> the documentation of my work is always a nightmare because I, it's quite difficult to first... All works involving duration are extremely difficult to uh, document um, because you never know what you have to show, why. And, of course, my, my problem is about, as we said, selection, why to choose this or this. A, it's always a big problem to make a choice, and so when it's um, when it's 
a question of a duration process where to why to to choose one on a, or another picture when basically the work is done because it's the quality is on the duration on something happening without any um, specific moment more important than uh, other ones so I don't know I mean that's when that that's something I'm going through since the beginning how to explain and how to present and how to document the work it's difficult it's just difficult I don't know it's all the time I think it's also a question of methodology I was thi I was thinking about methodology I think uh, each time I believe that I found the way to document the work and every time it's changing of course because my point of view about the work is changing also I don't know if it's if I give you any information about what you wanted to know Oh yeah, this is no. This, yeah, of course. This is this is a way to reintroduce a kind of methodology that I like to use in my work. I thought it was just funny to keep part of the work a bit a bit obscure, not because because I am the person of the tr transparency. I would like to explain everything. I think things can be totally flat and transparent and and very clear. It's still very complex. So I really appreciate to explain and to show things very very straightforward but then i thought it could be another kind of experiment to show slides without explaining anything because it's also the problem is when you pre when you make a selection you change of course the reality of the thing i mean the work is done over 2 5 10 years and you have what is creating a work what is producing a work it's a, a full of uh, event, it's, it's so complex. Would, it would be extremely interesting to try to understand what is actually producing a work, um, and maybe dress a list of. I tried to do something like that. I think once I was trying for a short period to uh, write down everything I was doing every day, everything, to try to by reading it after all, um, um, try to understand what kind of event I was. Um, taking with me and what I come on the abs what I did absorb during a certain period and what what is building you as a person um, so no I I don't I, fo I, I lost myself but I think the way I, I thought the way to present slides with no comment was just amusing and in a way as I said um, repeating the kind of method I like to use in the work. I think m uh, for me, uh, um, uh, pr um, producing uh, um, pieces of art have a lot to do with, with the idea of, of game. I think it has to do with the idea of imposing to yourself a certain r uh, a series of rules. And if you, impose your s if you impose this kind of rules, then what's happening? And this is the r this result is could be can be the work. So I think it, um, um, there is a, a very nice text I have to say about uh, from uh, Michael Newman about this about my work speaking about this aspect. I think the title is contingency and rules, and I think this is in fact um, an important side of what I l I'm interested in. Yes. Uh, those slides that you didn't want to comment, are they part of a work that you sold or they are they just works that you didn't sell? No, no, they are they are mixed or No, they are all works I did and they are they were all presented in some exhibitions. Oh, I and as I said, some of them are very important works to me. But for some reason I mean I had to decide to show this or this and um so they are they are works and they are. Uh, I could make another lecture by presenting only those works and not the one I was trying to speak about today. A question? I think maybe we'll uh, go to the bar now and, and maybe wait for part two and uh, next year. <laughs> Thank you very much.
also to remind you that uh, Ronald Jones will be talking same time, same place next week. Very good. Thank you. Very